One log processed, tree processed into a log, several more to go. So we've got the scariest tree that we're going to fall today. <laughs> Ugh. Bends one way, then leans the other way up further. So. So this is the tree that Thomas just cut down, which he was trying to make go that way. <laughs> the other way, but, the opposite it, way that it fell. <laughs> but it wanted to go where it wanted to go. I just counted the rings and this one is 82 um, years old. So alive long before us and uh, it's going to be a beautiful log in our cabin in the hopefully not too distant future. Beautiful tree, smells amazing. and. Uh, going to be, it's going to continue to be part of our lives. It's awesome. Good work. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, that's stressful. Sure. The best time to log, the best time to cut down trees, the best time to move trees is actually in the winter time. 
So hopefully we don't get the tractor stuck too many times today because this is why um, people generally don't cut down and try to move big trees at this time of year because the ground is very wet still, very mushy, and you can just tear everything up and make a big mess, but hopefully we can avoid that. trees down. Uh, 20 more to go. <laughs> so not, so Actually not five there. trees down. But oh is it five? Okay. Five trees. And obviously lots and lots of smaller trees but this was a big tree day. But it did start getting windy so that last tree went very much the opposite way it was supposed to go so we're gonna play it safe. Scooter vac check-in. Uh, we got a tray full of mosquitoes, some of which are still alive. Wow, check it out. That's a lot. Um, and the paper is doing its sticky job. This paper is supposed to last about 60 days, 90 days. Basically, when it gets coated with bugs, you need to get rid of it. And I'm happy to see that it's really just mosquitoes that, that's on there. Maybe some little flies, but there's no moths or any other bugs that we don't want to be trapping here. All mosquitoes. All mosquitoes. Wow. <laughs> and it's a pretty mosquito-y day. I'm wearing the head net. <sighs> that's great. It's doing something. 
And I'm going to try to capture on camera. There's some adorable little um, birds that are hopping around it. It doubles as a bird feeder. So that's cute too. is definitely really helpful but it's also a little bit sketchy moving these big logs <laughs> that one was really tough that one was a little bit trickier than the others because super, super well, long, very fat on one end and wobbly. thin on the other end i need to cut this stump out right here too it tilts me oh yeah time. yeah let me do that right now so i don't forget Starting over there, all the way around, and around there, and all the way. It's the great wall of slash. <laughs> great slash wall. I'd like to call it Mount Brushmore, but. <laughs> That term has already been coined, but it's definitely a lot. But yeah, it'll degrade and become smaller and then <laughs> hopefully manageable for us to push around and burn in a less summery time.
definitely feeling tired. Even though the tractors helped us with a lot of the big stuff, um, which is amazing. We literally could not move those logs on our own. Um, when we first had visions of doing this, I purchased two of those uh, log dogs thinking, yeah, we'll just like, I'm gonna just hook one end and you're gonna hook another end of those, you know, eight inch logs. And we're just gonna move them around. No, not quite. They're really heavy when they're, you know, as tall as a tree. So the tractor has been hugely helpful, but most of this, besides the chainsaw, has just been our ooh, back and forth labor. I'm not counting my steps, but I think there's been a lot, a lot of steps. How are you feeling? Tired. <laughs> really tired. Very tired. Exhausted. Yeah. But I'm contemplating taking down one more. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're addicted now. No. No. I don't know. I probably shouldn't. It's getting windy. It's three now, so. It's three. We've been at it since 8.30. Yeah. 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 We call it a day. I mean, worst case scenario, we're here Thursday finishing up. Yeah. Okay. I just, I was hoping to be done by tomorrow. Uh, well, we can keep working, no, honestly. I, I, I work when I'm not this safe, when I'm tired. I was going to say, that's my feeling about it. It's like, I start to get tired. I start to get, I do lazy cuts and yeah. the mosquitoes are having their way with me right now. Yeah. So I say we drag these out though. Okay. And then call it a day. Close that sign. So he's gonna take down this big tree in the back that has kind of a weird, like leaning one way and then back the other way and then back the other way again. And it's windy, so. I'm gonna guess it's gonna go this way. Okay.
Oh, this is some hard work, Carlin. Yes, it is. Oh, but it's good work too. I feel, I feel alive, I feel strong. But anyway, I want to take a moment to just discuss why we're cutting all these beautiful trees down. Because they are, they're gorgeous. And you can see we have lots of them. Um, we don't want to cut them down. Um, and, but in order to do what we want to do here in this space, which is to build a shop, we need to create a big pad, basically. And um, we have to bring in a lot of topsoil. And the re reason we have to do that is there's, you know, permafrost in the ground, the ground moves. Um, and so we got to build up a strong base. We're going to be bringing lots of big equipment here. So we need space for them to move around. There's going to be a DC-9 in here, a roller in here, and big trucks coming in, bringing in first what is called pit run, which is something they dig out of the Copper River. Um, it's like basically out of the bank of the river and it's a mixture of sand and uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of clay but mostly just rock and uh, we're just gonna put that on here level this whole place up roll it down get it get it nice and firm and that will give us uh, a good workable base to build a shop on and then when we put a shop in here we're gonna run sonic tubes in the ground pour concrete and we're gonna use brackets that allow us to adjust the beams um, the poles in, in, in the shop because the ground will settle possibly and we may have to jack some stuff up or set some stuff down a little bit so that'll help us kind of keep our shop looking nice and, and, and being stable and so that's why we're cutting all these trees down is unfortunately we just have to make the space to get everything in here um, we'd like to have, we wanted to leave a couple make like a little island of trees just kind of for appearance but just too difficult with all the big equipment coming in here and uh, yeah so there, there are beautiful trees. And when we build our cabin later, um, I think we're, we're just really gonna clear the space where our cabin goes and, and, you know, and then also a defensible space for fire, but we're gonna be able to leave some trees up. And um, the reason we're gonna be able to do that is we're gonna do a different build. It's not gonna be on a pad. Um, we're literally gonna sink poles in the ground over there and, um, and just set them in, like literally in, in, in the ground. The ground, the soil here is really interesting. It's, it's uh, topsoil is probably anywhere from four to eight inches of this kind of black loamy stuff. And then underneath that you have clay. I think it goes down about a foot and a half, maybe two feet. And then under that you have sand. And that sand is actually really good. Um, and so if you just wrap that with what they call bichethane, um, your posts, um, you can sink them right in the ground and just fill it right back up with all that material. And uh, like a lot of guys will drive them down like six feet well below the permafrost. And I've heard people say you shouldn't go below the permafrost. Um, but if you do, then there's, like, according to the folks that live around here, it is less likely that um, your structure is going to move. And so I'm just going on basically what people around here do and not necessarily what I read for some of these things. So anyway, uh, that's why we're clearing this space out. It's a lot of work, but um, we got a lot of nice logs now to build our future log cabin and a bunch of firewood. So. Getting down to the last few for today. I could be wrong, but I feel like this is the hardest thing we're going to do all summer. It's been a lot, and we do still have a few trees left, but whew. Thankfully it's been cloudy because honestly when the sun comes out with these like work pants I feel like I'm a thousand degrees so I'm really thankful that it's been cloudy and some nice breezes. We've just been super lucky with the weather. It was much sunnier and warmer last summer most of the time so for whatever reason we lucked out but I think after this the building of the shop while it will obviously have its challenges it's going to be Maybe less grueling, we'll find out. But rewarding, it's still rewarding. We're still loving it and super happy to be here. Making progress, feels good.
have a couple more trees to go.